Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about two very dangerous mistakes that traders make. And this follows up on last week's video where I shared with you kind of how I started off the year hot, got caught in a funk, and then ended up with a hot streak. And the first thing that I did when I came into uh, our Monday Q&A session with the traders I work with on the tier one platform is give them a warning. And it was a warning from personal experience. Now, you probably think that most trading mistakes come when things are going bad, but believe it or not, just as many can occur when things are going good. And two of the biggest mistakes that happen are one, overconfidence, and two, poor risk management. So let's start with overconfidence, right? Typically newer traders, right? We, we tend to think like this. When we are winning, everything is great because of us. When we are losing, it's because of the market or the broker or some other excuse, right? So we, we take credit when we're doing good, we shift credit when we're doing bad. So as you can imagine, when we're on a hot streak, some of the things that go through our mind is, man, I'm really good. I finally figured out the market, I've mastered it and we tend to get overconfident. We start deviating from our trading plan if we have one to begin with, and we start becoming more aggressive and taking setups that we probably shouldn't take, but because we're overconfident, because we have a feel, we feel like we can't be touched, it gives us that excuse to do so, right? This is NFL draft weekend, so the first thing I think about is an overconfident quarterback, right? A quarterback makes a few good throws, then all of a sudden, they're feeling good, they think they can fit it in the tight holes, and eventually the, the defense intercepts it, and well, that's just not good. The same thing happens in trading, except for an interception counts as a losing trade, and a losing trade counts as lost money. So becoming overconfident, over trading because of that overconfidence is a major mistake that I see many traders make. A second one is increasing your risk. And this follows up on the overconfidence, right? When you are overconfident, you feel like you can't be stopped. You're, you're on a hot streak. You're going to win some more. You start thinking to yourself, well, how can I maximize these wins? And an easy way to maximize these wins is to up your, uh, up your position size, is to increase your risk and make more off of your wins, right? This was the $30,000 mistake that I made a long time ago for you guys that know that story. I'm not gonna recap it, it makes me feel bad, but um, you follow along long enough or listen to enough podcast episodes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I increased my position size during a hot streak and I did so right into a cold streak. And I want you to think about this for a minute, right? As traders, we're doing two things, right? We are trading off of probabilities and we're trying to manage our risk throughout those probabilities. So this is all a numbers game and it's a big picture numbers game, meaning that we tr hopefully we're trading a system or a strategy that has an edge. An edge means that the probabilities are in our favor, that in the long run, if we continue to exploit that edge, we're going to be profitable. And again, risk, manage is, risk management is in there as well. So think about it like this. If we just take some very simple numbers here, and again, I don't want you to take this literally because it's big picture, but let's say you are a 60% trader, right? If you're a 60% trader, you're gonna win six out of every 10 trades, right? So let's think about this situation for a second. You get on a hot streak to start the month and all of a sudden, out of your first five trades, you win four of them, right? So half your trades, half of your 10 are done, you win four of them, right? You're feeling good, you're four out of five, you can't be stopped. Well, I want you to pause for a second and think about this, right? If you think about the remaining trades and the odds and the probabilities that go with those remaining trades, you've already taken four out of your six winners. You've only taken one out of your four losers. So the likelihood for your next five trades is that you're only gonna see two wins and you're gonna have three losses. You are more likely to lose than win. So if you are increasing your risk, if you're increasing your position size, while you're going into a situation where you're more likely to lose than win, is that really a positive thing? No, if anything, you should be, you should be doing the opposite. Now, I don't, I don't think you should do that either. That's a topic for another case. But if, if, if there was a choice between increasing position size and decreasing position size, I would say decrease. At least you're erring on the side of safety. Now that I think about it, it actually reminds me of a situation that we had in the live trading room this week where we had a trader come in and essentially he was taking two trades in the same direction for the same reason, I guess slightly different reasons, but basically doubling up on a position. 
And the day after we had the discussion, kind of walking through the pros and the cons and how I didn't think it was a good idea, but, you know, just, you know, I never tell people how to trade. I just give advice and you got to kind of let them figure it out on their own. Um, but the next day that he came in, the trade loss, and he was upset. And it wasn't for the fact that the trade loss, right? Losses happen. That's our mindset here at tier one. But he was upset that he lost double the amount he was supposed to because he doubled his risk due to feeling so confident about the trade. And it's an important lesson to learn. Better to be learned with uh, fake money or, or just mental money than real money. But this is what I used to do with real money. I used to have these very hot trading streaks. I would get overconfident. I would up my position size and then I would lose. And I wouldn't really lose that much. But because my losses were now essentially double because I was doubling my risk, it took away from all my wins. And, you know, once that losing streak was over, I'd basically restart the process either from breaking break even or from a little in a little bit of a hole. And again, the main thing is we don't want our drawdowns to make up for our extensions. We want to keep our drawdowns manageable. That way, as we buy time until that next heater, that next hot streak, we're not taking away from our profits and we can continue to really create that consistent trend-like movement, our equity curve of creating new equity highs and then having small retracements, then new equity highs and small retracements. Um, so those are two lessons that come with overconfidence, overtrading. Uh, leave me a comment below if you have anything to say about or if anything you want to add. I do have a podcast uh, going into more depth about some tips and techniques that you can use to kind of get rid of this overconfident state and kind of go back to normal so you don't happen to uh, you know make these mistakes. I'll let you know when that's coming out as soon as I figure out what it is. But now let's hop into the charts. Let's check out the trading ideas that are on my radar for the week ahead. But before we do that, if you are a new and or struggling trader, make sure you stop over to www.tier1trading.com. Check out this free webinar. Trust me, it is a much watch. It is 100% free and get started on the path to becoming a more educated and ultimately a consistently profitable trader. All right, guys, time to hit the chart. And before we start, we had a hell of a busy day on Friday. Typically, I say that Mondays and Fridays are more of the mellower days in the market, at least in my experience. The, the bulk of the action that I receive is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday during the meet of the week. But um, this Friday in particular was a little bit special because it's also the end of the month. So you're seeing a little bit of rebalancing going on. There's a little bit of risk aversion going on as well. And as a result of that, we saw a lot of dollar strength and a lot of big moves to end the week. It'll be very interesting to see how things start off on Monday. And I'll certainly be taking a at least a full day as I usually do on Monday to kind of get a lay of the land, at least to London and, and wait till New York um, opens up as well. But as far as weekend analysis goes, uh, we look at what we have on the charts and um, there's a lot on the radar. There's a lot of near misses as well, meaning uh, certain situations that were just invalidated. But I'm going to show you about three or four that are the main ones on my radar. And we're going to start off here on the pound dollar. Now, the pound dollar is interesting, right? We almost had back to back pattern formations here. If you guys remember from last week's video and I think the week before that as well. We we're looking at this setup right here that was just invalid for a pattern. Then we had another setup up here. Then last week we talked about a buy down here. So this consolidation on the pound dollar has been giving us a lot of opportunities to talk about. And we've got one more this week. And this is going to be in the form of two potential advanced pattern formations, depending on what time frame you're looking at. Now, if you're looking at here on the daily, right, we're going to have a potential bat pattern, right? This initial swing low to swing high, right? Right, this impulse leg right here is going to be our X to A. That's going to be the leg that begins our pattern formation. Our move down here is going to be our A to B. This retracement up here is going to be our B to C. You can see this time we stay below the A leg where in our previous situation we just spiked below it. This was an invalid setup. This one is valid. And if we come down to the 886 Fibonacci retracement taken from my X to A, if I'm find my line tool here, we are going to have what's called a bullish bat pattern. Looks something like this, X to A, swing low to swing high, A to B, B to C, and a CD completion right here for a buying opportunity. The zone of completion is gonna be from that D leg. One of these days I'll find where the right drawing tool's at. From the D leg uh, or the projected D completion, 
all the way to the X leg, which you can see is right at this previous um, retest of structure as well. So a nice solid structure level to have protect you for this potential advanced pattern formation. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. If we go down one more time frame to the four hour, things could look a little bit different. I just got a question from Sam on the platform for you guys that are on the tier one platform. I forget this is on YouTube as well, but for you guys that are on the tier one platform, um, you know, we've been talking about this lately. Sam just shot me an email talking about can we have X to A legs that are within bigger swings? And the answer is absolutely yes. If I delete what we have going on right here, or rather I'll, yeah, I'll delete it and just draw it back on, we have a clear X to A, a clear swing low to swing high that we can draw from instead of here. Well, I'll just delete that as well. <laughs> there we go. We'll draw from here, right, up to here. With this being our X to A, this changes things because all of a sudden, instead of this B retracement being at our 50%, it now pushes it down a little bit lower to the 618, which is gonna change the type of advanced pattern formation we have. And instead of a bat pattern that completes down there, this on the four hour could be looked at as a Gartley pattern that completes a little bit higher. So you see it's a massive difference depending on how you spot these two legs. Now, if you're asking a question, well, which one do I take? This is where your consistency in your trading plan comes in handy, right? If you are a daily trader, you should be trading on a daily. If you are a four hour trader, you should be trading on the four hour. If you're someone that happens to trade advanced patterns on both time frames, well, this is a situation you're gonna have to deal with. And you're gonna have to ask yourself which time frame trumps the other. And there's different ways to do that. You can have a, uh, a time frame that is more important. You can say, hey, I look at them both and whichever one completes first. Um, you can do stuff with risk reward or you can enter both. There's all different ways to handle it, but understand that is something that you're going to need to address and something that should be in your trading plan before you start trading live. Real quick, just to draw the kill zone out, move it up a little bit. Our D completion is going to be right up here at the 786, down to our X leg, which is right here. Keep in mind when you're creating stops, I don't think you'll be able to and, and, and keep a quality risk reward, but the safest place is going to be under this double bottom right here. Um, again, risk reward wise, I don't think you're going to be able to do it if you require a one to one, but just to put on your radar. All right, so up next is the New Zealand dollar. And just like the pound dollar, you can see a big bearish candle to end the week, to end the month. Um, as we see a, a pro dollar attitude going into May. Um, and what we have here as we go down to the four hour is going to be another advanced pattern formation. This is going to be a cipher pattern. I'm going to draw it on quickly for you so I don't waste too much time, but it has already passed the entry and it is in that kill zone. So the cipher pattern is going to look like this. Swing low to swing high, X to A, right? Our first retracement right here is gonna be our A to B. This extension up here is gonna be our B to C. And if we push down to that 786, that is gonna be our C, D completion. And that zone is gonna go from our 786 down to our X leg. So you can see we're right in that kill zone as well. Now. If you're a pattern trader and you're not involved in this already, you can enter at market. It is valid until that X leg is violated. If you're a CTS trader, combined technical score trader, you can look at this as a CTS trade as well, right? If we add up our score, we're gonna get three points from the pattern formation, right? We can look left structure leaves clues. You can see we're at a previous level of structure, beautiful candlestick combination right there. If we bring in our indicators, you can see that the RSI is over sold as well, adding another point. Um, so now what you should be waiting for, if this is in your, your again, your checklist obviously, is asking yourself the question, well, what is my reason for entry? How can I enter this trade? Do I need a double bottom? Do I need a higher high, higher close? Do I need, need this? Do I need that? Um, that's what you're waiting for for entry. And of course, if you're allowed to, you can drop down to a lower time frame, the hourly, and see if that comes even closer. You can see we did have a big red candle um, early in the morning, or not early in the morning, I guess mid-morning here on Friday, but as the London markets close and we got into the afternoon here in New York, price started to kind of just, well, kind of falter, right? We, 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 we lost momentum, we kind of just, slowly uh slowly moved our way lower giving us one of those right or those falling channel type of uh, price movements now you do want to be a little bit cautious with this type of falling channel right um typically these are very good signs of relief so looking for a bullish move you do want to keep in mind this is a friday so it's a little bit different because 
really no one in England is trading at the end of a Friday. Really, everyone in New York is kind of just, you know, happy hour waiting for Friday to be done. Um, so it's not the same type of falling channel that you would see, say, in the, in the middle of the work week or something like that. So finally, we're gonna look at Bitcoin dollar. And this was something that we looked at a few weeks ago here in the YouTube video. I remember this inside bar right here. We were looking for a bias inside bar break to the upside, which we never got. And that brings up an important lesson as well, right? I do post time to time. Obviously, I share a few guys ideas here on YouTube. I do post time to time on TradingView. And I don't think I express this enough to traders that I don't work with directly. But um, if you're just kind of a, a common trader that's used to signal services and stuff like that, understand that when we're doing this analysis and we're looking at this, um, just because we analyze the market and we make a prediction doesn't mean that we're taking the trade right away. I talked about it on the New Zealand dollar, right? A lot of the times we're waiting for confirmation. We want to be predictive in our analysis, reactive in our execution. So we're predicting that if this occurs, then we're looking for a move higher. But if the if never occurs, then the then never happens. That was a confusing way of saying it, but you get what I mean. Um, and in this situation right here, we never got the break to the upside here. And so that invalidates the trading opportunity. Now, this was an interesting uh, conversation piece this week in the live room because this was an op this was a example of when rules and common sense don't always meet. We're talking about, did we violate this level? This is a previous outside return, and the violation of this level would mean a, a change in our thought process as far as that IPDE goes. But because we wicked lower and never actually closed below as our, our low watermark got lower and lower, we never actually got that violation, even though price looks like we did. Um, so we're looking for buying opportunities down here. Um, I'm gonna not pause the tape, but go into a little bit of self-talk by the way uh, real quick if you guys are if you guys don't mind and for you guys that have been in the live room right roberto shared with us his inside bar strategy and now i'm looking for it everywhere because you know i have a thing for inside bars let's just take a look at this right here going to replay mode again if you're on the if, if you're watching on youtube i apologize this is what you get with me i, I i'm a, a chartist i love it i i'm always experimenting and, and, and taking mental notes and literal notes as well so when i see something that catches my attention i kind of zone off so you can leave if you want to if you're not down with that or you can stay with us and learn something um but what we're looking for here with roberto strategies again we have our inside bar right here He's looking at the stochastics RSI, modified stochastics RSI being oversold. We are well oversold. So this would have been a buy signal for him. And by his rules, he does a one, a one ATR stop. Uh, we'll just put a stop below the lows right here instead of measuring everything out. Um, and then you kind of see our targets drawn in already. Let's just see if this would have hit. Um, look at that. Not bad, Roberto. You might be on to something. Um, on different pairs. Of course, you're on to something already on, on the few pairs you master. But I know you said it only works on a few for you. But this is uh, intriguing to me because I love inside bars. Ever since I was a struggling trader, inside bars have intrigued me because back in the day when I was losing money hand over foot, inside bar strategy was the only thing that really worked for me. And uh, if you're new, sorry about that. Inside bars are bars that complete um, completely inside the previous bar. So if you look at this bar right here, this would be called the mother bar. You can see this bar with the yellow triangle. The range is completely inside the range of the previous bar. What that means is it's basically a period of consolidation and we would expect the breakout. Our job as traders is we want to be predictive in, so we want to add other things to it instead of just trading every inside bar. We want to add other things to it and predict the direction of that breakout. Um, so price action has rallied up. And we've just passed, right, back to the regular program, we just passed an important level, right? This was a key level of structure for us, this intermediate level right here. This was a little bit of a, a, a pause, right? Again, we just talked about how inside bars represent consolidation. Inside bar, right? Inside bar, two almost back to back, a lot of consolidation before dropping lower. So if we can clear that consolidation, that gives us a good sign that the buyers are in control and that we could see a continued push up. If we're going to see continue push up, where are we likely to continue up to? Do, 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 do. Previous structure highs and beyond, especially if you are a, a Bitcoin investor. Um, so now the question is, how can we take advantage of this? This means going down to our lower time frame. We can go to a four hour, right? We can see this little consolidation right here. It will get clear on an hourly as well, right? So on the hourly, you see this. You see price action rallying up. 
rallying up, there we go, finding a little bit of resistance, right? Look left, structural leaves, clues, that red line. And then, oh, I guess we technically didn't break above it, did we? Yeah, yeah, there we go, we did. Um, and then eventually breaking and closing above it. And once you get that break and close above, we identify higher, high, higher close. We predict price is likely to go higher. Now we have to ask ourselves, how can I get involved? If you're a breakout trader, you probably got long already. If you're a pullback trader, wait for a pullback into this beautiful ascending triangle. Mm, magnificent. And then look for that next extension, if I can draw it correctly, up. And as we mentioned before, there's a, a fair amount of opportunity um, left on this trade. So that's a, a decent pullback trade here on Bitcoin. Here's the three keys we're going to cover today. The first one is the master key, and that's how to create a backtested profitable trade plan without wasting years of your life. Now, they're going to look at two other keys to go along with this, and they're going to call, be called sub keys. Why is that? Well, they're actually part of the primary master key, which is the backtested profitable trade plan. These other two keys are things that you will do inside of the plan, but they're so important. I wanted to break them out and show them uh, individually to you as well. Second one, the first sub key anyway, is how to make more profits by being wrong more than you're right. That's right. Actually, be wrong more than you're right and still actually make more profits. Pretty amazing. And then the second key or the um, third key and the second sub key is how to almost double, if not double, your profits without changing your trading strategy. Okay, this is pretty amazing. You actually do the same thing. And I'm going to show you how you can actually double, if not double, your profits without changing a single thing about your trading strategy. All right, so now it is time to take out your pen and your notepad, and we'll get started with key number one. 